correct, exactly. When it's ready, you feel. I, I, I've been writing so much of those articles, so many of those articles. Honestly, when it's ready, you feel it. You feel yeah. it's ready. You sit down, you just write it down. And in, uh, in, in, in sometimes in half an hour on the train, I've written, you know, the piece I wanted to write. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. It is yet another week. And I am very excited here. Oh, by the way, Andrew Dupey, the uh, Chief Relationship Officer here at Leaders Press, your host, as usual. Uh, you should know me by now. But uh, today, we have someone that you do not know, and I want to introduce to you. I want to introduce JC Galliard. So JC is the founder of uh, and CEO of Corex Partners. That's a London-based boutique management and consultancy firm and thought leadership platform. They're focused on assisting CIOs and other C-level executives in resolving cybersecurity strategy, organization, and governance. Uh, he's a leading advisor, senior executive, and global cybersecurity influencer with over 25 years of experience developed in several financial institutions in the UK and in continental Europe. He's got a track record at driving fundamental change in the security field across global organizations, looking beyond the technical horizon into strategy, governance, cultural, and the real dynamics of transformation. Uh, JC, that looks like a heck of a CV. <laughs> uh, tell yeah, us a little the, about yourself. That's the that that's the that's the corporate version of it. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> well, let's uh, get a little non-corporate version. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you to Lead the Press for inviting me onto the onto the podcast. Yes, I'm JC Gellard. I'm uh, the founder and managing director of, of CEO of, of Corex Partners. And as you said, we are we're a boutique um, management consulting business. We are more a, 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 an ecosystem of experts really than a traditional consulting mm. firm. We're based in London. I'm French and British. I've been living and working in London since 1993. Uh, and essentially for the first, first part of, of my career in the financial sector, and then gradually establishing what became Corex Partners about 10 years ago. And we've been working mostly with large organizations. I mean, typically, typically, you know, FTSE 100 type of organizations. We help them uh, understand their cybersecurity ch challenges, the building up security organizations, security operating models, security strategies. That's what we do. So we are directly plugged into the field. You know, we work with uh, real people and real life situations. So we are we're not we're not your typical big four consultant in any way. In, in, mm. in many many ways, we 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 cut across that grain quite quite heavily. Uh, and and we bring real life experience, real life stories, and that's essentially what we're going to be talking about, I think, because that's most more, more or less what inspired the book. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so tell us one just one step back a little bit. The word digital transformation is used so often nowadays, and I mean we we've done books on it in the past, and and obviously this is something that is on the tip of everybody's tongue. Tell us a little bit about digital transformation and why it's important. Well. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to go off a tangent here a little bit and tell you tell you about where, where cybersecurity fits in all this. Okay. Because it's obviously it needs to be at the heart of digital transformation. You, you know, your digital trust is underpinned by cybersecurity. Okay. And mm -hmm. digital trust is at the heart of the digital transformation. So fundamentally, those things are interlinked. But security is, uh, in in many ways. Um, I don't want to say it's more complex, but it's different. The dynamics of, of transforming a security practice are not the same as the dynamics of transforming a business from a legacy business to a digital business. They're different things. Security is, is, is more, um, it, 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 it has to work across silos. You know, you, it's not just a technical discipline in itself. You, know, it, you need to be able to reach across the different parts of the organization different silos of the organization in particular mm. in large firms to make it work and that's what makes cybersecurity transformation challenging over and above the challenges of the digital transformation itself okay uh, so what inspired you to get into this field uh, a little bit before we actually go into the, the book what brought you to this in interestingly enough it's exactly what i've just said that 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 brought me into it and kept me excited and interested about it that complexity mm -hmm. The fact that you cannot, this is not just a one dimensional technical field. Okay. Uh, you cannot reduce it to that. Of course, cybersecurity has a technical dimension, but it hasn't got just a technical dimension. And you, to be successful, you need to be able to reach across the business. It has that complexity, and you cannot take it away from it. To be successful, mm -hmm. you will have to work across with the business, with support functions, and bring everybody on board. It is not just a one dimensional technical technical uh, discipline. And, and, and this is what fascinated me, because if I look at what I was doing very much during the first 10 years of my career, I was involved in technical projects. Um, and, and that was very much, as I said, a, a one dimensional siloed type of thing. And security opened up 
my perspective on the way the com the way the way corporate works and how you make things happen in corporate. Yeah. And that's what kept me excited and motivated, and that's what has fueled the the next twenty years of my career, frankly. Yeah, and I, I I I can understand why that would be interesting because we did have, I mean, probably even just prior to the pandemic, companies were still thinking about uh, their digital side as maybe something separate from everything else. But now we're seeing a trend that you have to basically be completely digital <laughs> in all of your thinking, don't we? All those things are merging. You cannot just have your digital initiatives on one side and, and the rest of your business on the other side and security floating around. It can't be like that anymore. Those things have merged. And the pandemic indeed has forced uh, many organizations to re rethink themselves or reinvent themselves as the digital organizations. And, and they can't ignore security anymore. It's there. It's at the heart of it. It, it underpins digital trust, as I was saying. Okay. Uh, you know, so data breaches or, or, or cyber attacks could take your business down and take very significant chunks of it now. Uh, you know, this is not the same as it might have been five years ago in many in many exactly. industries. Yeah, because I mean, at this point, we're not talking about, you know, somebody just hacking a server. We're not talking about somebody just getting in and, and maybe stealing some information. We're talking about some of the ability to actually get into all elements of a company and yeah, it, it actually, like you say, bring it down from the inside. And yeah, anyway. yeah. Cyber threats have evolved, of course. Uh, yeah. They continue to evolve. They've been evolving constantly for the past 20 years. Uh, but yes, the, the, the challenges are now different in scale. Uh, because everything is interconnected, so yes, you know, a ransomware attack on at one on one part of your supply chain can impact you, and then one thing after another, and you know, your your business is down, and or you know data breaches have been enormous. I mean, you were talking about hundreds of millions of records stolen. I mean, those those numbers are are, are they're not common, but you come across them, okay? Uh, yeah. and, and and the volumes the volumes have, have have changed, and of course the impact. The scale of the impact has changed as well. So yes, your business can go down. And as a result, when you're hit, well, the numbers add up as well. Okay. Um, even if we look back pre-pandemic at the at, at the, 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 the WannaCry and the not PTR virus outbreaks that you know 27 in, in 20 in, in 2017. You know, because we've got good numbers. I'm going back so far because we've got good reliable numbers. You know, the mm -hmm. stories have been around and 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 those people have been forced to explain a little bit what happened. But you know the the big firms hit by those 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 outbreaks, they lost hundreds of millions in revenue, mm -hmm. and they faced, you know, bills in the tens of millions with lawyers and uh, and, um, and and IT guys really to get things restarted. And th those are real numbers. This is hard cash. Okay, on your balance sheet, it may leave a bigger or smaller um, a trace, depending on how good your business is doing and you know how. How well the sector is performing as well generally, and but but you can't hide it anymore. You can't brush right. under the carpet because investors will ask what's happened, and 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 yeah, that that was that was my next question. Is like, and then you, the the problem then becomes not just your balance sheet, but also your reputation and your PR and and and, and your your reputation with your clients. If they don't feel they're safe, they're not going to do business with you. Exactly, and all those things are are now totally totally interlinked. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so this is a uh, this is a field that is growing. I mean, we know this from the fact that we've been in it now for or in publishing for five uh, plus years doing what we've been doing. We've seen more and more uh, books about this. We've seen more and more people that are getting into this business. How did you stand out as an expert in your field that had the answers to the uh, to the problems that you're talking about? For me, um, I started writing about this in 2015 mm. because, frankly, I had enough of you know, hearing always the same stories and going to the same conferences and see the same vendors and the same people repeating the same old stories. And for me, um, you know, the penny dropped in many ways. And I, I stood there at the back of one room one day, scratching my head and saying, you know, until, until we, we kind of just sit there at the back complaining that those guys keep telling us the same things. Uh, you know, we know there is a problem in the cybersecurity industry. We know that it's a 20 to 25 years old um, discipline not much older than that. The first CISO mm -hmm. was a chap called Steve Katz, and I think he was appointed at Citibank in, 20, in 1995. So it gives you a sort of idea of how, how, how old the industry is. But fundamentally, best practice is almost as old as that. Okay? Uh, it's, it started to come together 
uh, around uh, around the British standard, double seven, double nine, and then it become an ISO standard, which even eventually morphed into IS, the ISO 27000 series. We're talking about something that happened at the turn of the century. Mm -hmm. So good practice is well established. It's been well established for the best part of the last 20 years. And many of the large organizations I was I was listening to, you know, lecturing the world on what to do or not to not to do, you know, they had had people in those jobs for the best part of the of, of the period. Collectively, they would have been spending billions with tech vendors and tech consultants. And then you turn around and you see breaches happening day in, day out. And you have to ask yourself, you know, there is something there that's not working okay, fundamentally. Mm, and yeah. Until we accept that, until we face that, until we look back and say, well, listen, you know, what we've been doing for the past 20 years is not working very well, at least in large firms. Until you face that and you start looking for where the roadblocks are and you start dealing with those, nothing will never change. And that's the background in which everything I've been writing about is rooted. But that's my starting point, and that's I think is what differentiates me because I stand I stand apart from the the the, the, the bulk of the of, of the noise, if you want the dominant noise. Yeah. The dominant noise is still all about tech. The dominant noise, dominated by the, the 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 message of tech vendors and tech consultants, is that this is just about tech. It's about tech products. It's about buying more and more tech. I say the opposite: give or take. I say you're not going to solve your problems just by buying more tech. The problems are elsewhere. The problems are rooted in culture, in governance, in the way large organizations work or don't. Okay. Yeah. Many of those problems are also rooted in 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 deep deep dysfunctions. Okay. Uh, you, you cannot expect cybersecurity to work well in an organization that doesn't work well in general. You can come back to that if you want. But those problems are rooted in those concepts. Buying more tech, buying the next shiny tool, is not going to solve your problems. That's that that's that's for sure. Okay. And that's essentially the bulk of what I've been saying and writing about. And that's what's in the book. Yeah. I mean, and I, I have experienced some of that in my own life. Uh, one of my closest friends is also a cybersecurity expert. Yeah, you know, that, that was, you remind me of something that he told me uh, with one of his clients that it's not the technological element that you have to worry about. You have the ability to stop hacks. It's the human element that almost always comes in and is the problem. And the human elements as well is rooted in culture, and culture is, is the, you know, the culture around security is rooted around the culture. It's rooted in, in inside the culture of the company at large. You're not going to care about the security of the, of, of your company, of the sec, or the security of its data, or the security of its customers, if you don't care about the business to start with, mm -hmm. because the culture is toxic, because you don't like your bosses, because you don't feel well treated. Okay? All those things have to be seen. Uh, are to be dealt with together, if you want. Okay, <clears throat> but beyond culture, there is governance as well. The way the guys at the top are actually seeing the problem, the way they are dealing with it, the way they are accepting it as a as something which belongs to their uh, to their to their world, to their to, to, to the, the nature of the topics they deal with, up to the board really. And and um, this to me is is uh, is very much where the problems are in large firms. The, the, the top execs have the tendency to see this as a as an operational problem, as a technical problem, frankly, that lives way below them, and 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 they delegate it down to the CISO, to the CIO, to the CTO, to someone else. And at that level, in large organizations, sometimes you don't have enough leverage to get anything mm -hmm. anything done. So, and that's essentially one of the problems I still see quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, so, taking a little bit of a tangent, uh, I know a lot of our audience is is thinking about, yeah, you know, maybe they're in your field. How hard is it to put this stuff down into a book? I mean, that's, I think, uh, a really interesting thing. You're an expert in this field. How did you manage to actually take the step to turn this into something that you felt that people would want to read? Well, I, I cheated a little bit, to be honest, um, <laughs> in the sense that um, I, I started, I, I went back to all the articles I, I, had, uh, I had been writing over the years. You know, the book you guys have just published, which was released at, uh, in February, is actually the, the fifth edition mm. of something I've been doing myself, uh, a self-promotion for, um, well, for, for four years before, since 2017. Uh, we were doing it mostly to give away at events, to give away at, at, at cli you know, to clients. Uh, but what I've been doing for, for the, all those years, I've been, I've been putting those articles in, in, in print, really. Right. Uh, essentially, what I realized one day in 2017 that I had written close to 30,000 words 
worth of, of articles. And I thought, you know, that, that makes a little book. And I, I started putting those articles in print. So essentially, the way the book is structured is, is just the, 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 the compilation of the articles. They're, 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 they're grouped together by theme. They've been written chronologically, so they, they have not been written at all in the order. In the order, they're in the book. But in the book, they are classified by theme, such as the role of the CISO, the role of the board, and so on. And 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 you know you follow my journey throughout those um, seven to eight years uh, in terms of thinking process. Uh, one article after another, you see the way I have sometimes changed my mind, sometimes not at all. And that's essentially the way the book is structured. Is that really cheating, though? I mean, you, you bring up the that you kind of cheated. Is it cheating when it's actually you putting your material out <laughs> and, and just finding out a new way to to express it? You know, as I was saying, as I was saying, and before before you the book got to you uh, last year, I had been doing it for a number of years. So I, I realized doing it myself that it makes sense. It made sense actually, and people liked it. Mm -hmm. So. You're right. Maybe it's it's cheating. Maybe it's not. But it's a, it's a way of putting your ideas out there. And I didn't want to move far away from it because it it charts my journey. At the end of the day, you know, it charts my journey uh, throughout those topics. And uh, yeah, there are things that are changing, things that are not changing. Uh, you know, there are lots of topics in in the book. I mean, there is one topic which is revisited, I think, three times or four times, which is you know the questions the board needs to ask. What questions? You know what, what? What are the questions the board should ask around cybersecurity? And and I came across questions and and articles and 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 things like that throughout the period. And I kept commenting. And you can see that you know fundamentally I haven't really changed my mind. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, it's an interesting topic, just as an example, <clears throat> on the profile of the CISO, for example, uh, or the reporting line. Things are have been a little bit different, but it does it does chart that journey. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, and that's just it. I think that you're getting into uh, answering a, a, a more of one of the questions I had earlier. It's like, how do you stand out? It's like your individual journey is unique to you, isn't it? Isn't that how you manage to actually stand out against everybody else? Yeah, definitely. And, and the fact that I, I don't shy away from, from treating this uh, as, as a management problem and as a governance problem and as a leadership problem. That's also a big differential. If you look at the volume of stuff that's right that's written about cybersecurity, it's all about tech fundamentally, the bell curve. Yeah. I think that's also a very important differentiator. The fact that I don't shy away from the rest. I'm not in denial about it. And I and I confront it. Okay. And that's also that's also uh, uh that, that's also a key differentiator. Yeah, I'm swimming a little bit or a lot against the current, yeah, I know, but you know, it, it has to be said. But, but swimming against the current, it, it, that's sometimes that's a really good thing to do because uh, when you're swimming against the current, you're unique in that way. Yeah, it needs to be done, I think. And I haven't changed my mind. I haven't come across anything of the, the, the you know the five or seven years I've been writing to convince me otherwise. I think it needs to be done. I think yes, sometimes it's a hard sell, but you know it needs to be said. And I see some organizations changing, and uh, undoubtedly the COVID crisis has opened the eyes of some people on a number of things and uh, but fundamentally the penny is dropping you know in boardrooms as well more and more i i hear a different story coming from uh, cios in particular or ctos i hear more and more cios telling me you know i can't spend as much as i like on cyber i you know i can't put as much as i like in, on my budget or, or on cyber but i need to get it done i need to execute and that's my problem because I don't have the people, because I don't have the skills, etc. Yeah. So the, 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 the language has shifted in many boardrooms. It's not so much about how, why do we need to spend so much. You know, increasingly, it's, you know, are we spending enough? Mm -hmm. and, and how much do we need to spend? So the questions yeah, yeah, have changed. Yeah. But with, the, with, a, diff, with the, the, a different set of questions come a different set of challenges. And that is putting the CISOs and the CIOs under a lot of pressure because as per my previous example, execution becomes paramount. The day you've got 10 or 20 million on your desk, you know, people are gonna expect expect you to, to to do something with them and to do what you said you would be doing. Yeah. And and that's just a really good point. It's like you can't you can't look at this as something that's separate anymore. Even us as a publishing company. I mean, we work with books. 20 years ago, not even 20, 10 years ago, we wouldn't have really had to, to consider 
the our our digital side is being basically the core of our business. Now we're completely integrated with digital. I mean, we're we're talking on Zoom. Everything that we do right now is completely digital. And that's in something that has been considered to be kind of a conservative industry. <laughs> so I can only imagine what someone that's in a tech industry or, or, or a tech adjacent industry might be able to have to face. Well, there is no industry anymore that has not been right. digitized in some ways. You know, frankly, I keep I look around, I'm still struggling to find any any industry that is not somehow digitized or in the process of being digitized. So this is uh, again, this is what the COVID crisis has done. Right. It has accelerated all those things and, and and many, 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 many activities or industries that were still relying on 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 manual processes or paper-based processes that have I've had to move away from those. Yeah, and that, that's actually a good point too, that I think this would have happened eventually, uh, one way or the other, whether we had the crisis or not. In some ways, I think maybe COVID was, you know, I don't want to say that COVID was a good thing because obviously there was a horrible, horrible amount of, of uh, death, loss, and destruction from it. But in business, it, it kind of lit a fire under us, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it has accelerated the digital transformation. I think there is no doubt about it. It has accelerated that uh, that um, um, how can I say that 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 um, the, the, the drive towards tech or more 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 tech the digitization mm -hmm. really. undoubtedly uh, it, it's been it's been forced upon upon many businesses and many industries but broadly speaking it has worked mm -hmm. and it and it has dragged cybersecurity with it because to an extent you need it you cannot just. Yeah. You cannot just go online, you know, without any form of cybersecurity. So it has dragged cybersecurity with it, and and that's been good as well in in that respect. Yeah. Uh, so uh, just a, another quick segue with your with your book. So now that your book is out, uh, you have it down. What is? How are you going to leverage that to integrate with your business and build your visibility? Well, we're still in the process of figuring it out. To be honest, it's uh, it's it's out there. Um, I've been promoting it on social media using the various social media channels I'm um, I'm, I'm I'm on. Uh, I'm still thinking about a number of things. I'm I'm writing another one to start with. Excellent. Uh, just uh, rehashing the same content, the same ideas in a different way. But to present a, a different, uh, to present a different, uh, different narrative, or or maybe to make the underlying narrative a bit clearer, not not really a bit clearer, but a bit more, a, a, a bit yeah, uh, yeah. I guess I could say a bit clearer, yeah. Um, so that's it. I'm 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 continuing to think around what what uh, how we, how I could carry on working with that that content. I'm going to carry on writing as well every time a good idea comes up. <laughs> is essentially the way it's been working throughout the period. I mean, I don't sit down to write articles. I come across situations that inspire me to write a piece. Okay. It always works th th that way. I've never forced myself to write. It's always right. situations have always appeared in front of me, and I say, "Oh my God, this is this is still happening. I need to write something about it." Okay. Well, there's so I mean, but there's so much content that you don't necessarily have to force yourself. <laughs> if you, uh, there, oh, yeah, 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 exactly. And and you know, I still come across situations which are, frankly, almost unbelievable in in, in this day and age. And uh, and and you keep scratching your head. You know what? Why? How on earth can we still see those problems? So I, I can't tell you a lot more, but you you know, trust me. Sometimes it's it's concerning. <laughs> no, I, I trust me. I, I'll. It being slightly ancillary to uh, to that business with my friend, I've heard some horror stories that I can't talk about myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, what uh, I like to kind of have a little bit of a segment at the end where we just kind of have what advice would you have for basically any of our listeners that are in, let's say, cybersecurity or tech that are thinking about writing a book. What mindset should they be in when they sit down and actually begin? To take the step in the process of putting that down, I would say again, it's going back to what I was just saying. Don't don't overwork it. Mm -hmm. uh, it needs to it needs to be natural. You need to have something to say. Don't force yourself to to to, 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 to say things. Don't write a book because everybody else is writing a book. Try to find your voice. Try to find something you need to say and say it. Uh, it's not for everybody, though. To be honest, it's not for everybody. Uh, but 
you know, if you if you feel you have something unique to to, to say, then then then, then say it. But but uh, but wait for the right time. Wait for the right ideas to be to be there in your head. And uh, in in my case, it's uh, it's that, that that's the way it works. You know, all those all those things have uh, taken time to, to come together. Those ideas they take. You know, as I was telling you, I come across a situation. Uh, I say I need to write something about it, and then generally, uh, you know, nothing happens for a number of days, and then I start drafting something, and I revisit it, I revisit it, I revisit it. But that's the way it, it, it happens. And and the kind of stuff I'm doing now towards that second book, this idea of rehashing the content, it's working exactly in the same same way. You know, I'm, I've got I've got an idea, I've got a script, I know the kind of stuff I want to talk about, and I'm just you know bringing elements together. But it's iterative. It's iterative, but you need to give yourself you need to reach a point where you have a clearer idea, of, a, a clear enough idea of, of, of what you're trying to say, and then uh, and then start. But I would personally, for for me, it works better in that way. Let it simmer, let it stew for a while, and 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 then uh, you know you generally it makes me far more efficient at, uh, at writing or at least putting my ideas on paper as a first draft and then working on it and working. On it. But it, yeah. it's quite iterative in my case, I find. Yeah, I think I think many others find that the same way. I mean, it, it, you let the idea percolate in your head, and then you just have to approach it and, and build it out. Yeah. Yeah, and start you start writing, and and generally in my case, it's it's uh, generally it's, it's quick, it's quick for me, mm -hmm. it's quick. Once the as you say, you let it percolate, it percolates, it percolates, and then you know when it's ready, it it, it comes out. <laughs> when, case, it, when it's ready, you don't have a choice; it comes out. <laughs> yeah, correct, <laughs> exactly. When it's ready, you feel. I mean, I, I've been writing so much of those articles, so many of those articles. Honestly, when it's ready, you feel it. You feel yeah. it's ready. You sit down, you just write it down. And in, uh, in 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 sometimes in half an hour on the train, I've written you know the piece I wanted to write. You know, uh, when it's ready, it's ready. Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, actually, that that thirty minutes stuff it it happened to me a few weeks ago. Honestly, on the train, wherever I was going, that's it. Sit down, you bring the laptop out, and you say ding 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 ding, and in thirty minutes, you've got the seven fifty words you wanted to have. Yeah. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Listen for that. Uh, listen for that ding, ding, ding in your head. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, JC. Uh, for our audience that may be interested in your book uh, and may be interested in actually doing business with you, how can they find your book and how can they find you? Well, the book is on Amazon, the Cyber Security, the Cyber Security Leadership Handbook for the CISO and the CIO. You can also go to corexpartners.com and you find the link on the front page. You can go to LinkedIn, to my profile on LinkedIn. Uh, you know, all those the details are on the contact page on corexpartners.com. And if you want to uh, reach out, you, you just use those, those contact details and reach out. It's as simple as that. You can reach out on LinkedIn. You can reach out by email. Uh, you can reach out, reach out on Twitter if you want at, Corex, uh, at Corex underscore JC. And, uh, and that's it, really. No, no need to be too uh, worried. If you like the book, if you have, if you have purchased the book and like the book, leave me a five star. On Amazon, <laughs> that's the deal. You know, I love that. And just as a quick segue before we end, I, I love that you asked for the review because so many people miss that. It's like you yeah. know, go in there and actually get, in in our media. What I do, I always say like and subscribe. And hey, ladies and gentlemen, like and subscribe. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they don't always ask. Give me a review. Yeah, do do leave a review. It's it's uh, you know if you like it, leave a review. That's that's important. Yeah. I think <clears throat> for others, essentially. Well, ladies and gentlemen, those links are down below. Go ahead and grab a copy of JC's book and leave a review. Uh, JC, I was really happy to have you here today. I, we could have talked for a lot longer. Uh, rabbit holes of the cybersecurity thing is kind of something I'm interested in, so we could have done some deep dives and maybe we will later. Uh, but we definitely appreciated having you on and it was a pleasure and we wish you the best. Great stuff. Thanks a lot, Andrew. Thanks a lot to everybody at Leaders Press. Thank you.